Hello, in this video I'd love to share with you my experience of making biochar at home. Um, something you can do, something very simple, you need limited resources. It's a fantastic product that can improve your soils, improve crop production, sequester carbon from the atmosphere. It's an indigenous knowledge, thousands of years old, straight from the Amazon. Um, for more on it, specifically this miracle organic product, just click on the link appearing now. Otherwise, I'd just like to get on with a really simple process of how you can make it at home. You're going to need a metal container. It's important that it's metal because it's going to be under a lot of intense heat. Um, but you want it to be tight closing. You don't want too many gaps because then the fire's going to get in and ultimately turn your biomass, not into char, but, well, ash. I got these two for about a pound at my local recycling centre. It's important to make two little holes somewhere, just somewhere small, where the gases and vapours can escape, but also the pressure. You don't want too much air pressure building up in there, or it's just going to blow the top off. As I said, this was an experiment, so I was also experimenting with two different types of wood. On the left here, I was using twigs and sticks that I'd broken up. And then in the r on the right, in the smaller biscuit tin that I got from this recycling centre, I was using harder woods, more denser woods, more blocks. Ultimately, I wanted to see which made the bio, biochar, the better biochar, sorry, and which became a better powder. Equally, with two different types of tins, I also made two different types of fires. I decided to have the twigs um, on top of an open fire. Here, you can see that one. That's about after half an hour. As you can see, the metal container gets under a lot of heat intensity. That one's getting quite battered there. Um, but then with the second one, I was going to put the denser woods inside our actual fire drum. Again, just experimenting with which process worked better, charred better, etc. So this is after about 40 minutes with the twigs on some dying down embers. Um, they were very hot. They'd been burning away for quite a while. There's the drum just getting ready for number two. The white stuff coming out of the hole isn't smoke necessarily. Don't worry, it doesn't mean that your biomass is burning. In fact, those are just the gases and vapours escaping from the wood. In fact, they're very combustible. If I'd put a flame to that right now, they would really burn off completely. So like I say, keep an eye on it. You don't want that hole too big. You don't want flames getting in there. But as long as you see those gases escaping and there's no flames too close to it, you should be fine. I let that one go for about an hour and then took it off to cool down at which point I could concentrate on number two. Like I said, I put this one inside the fire drum. With the oil drum, I wanted to make sure that number two wasn't directly on the embers, just because the intensity of the heat in there was so much, I didn't want it to, well, get through the metal. So with a bit of ingenuity, I um, attached a coat hanger and then threaded that over a stick so I could keep it just above the embers. Here you can see the gases coming off nicely. Um, and you know this only just took an hour even though it was a denser wood the intensity of heat inside the oil drum was so great that it went very fast so hindsight I'd definitely be using a drum again just because it's quicker more manageable and wastes less resources actually you need less wood to get those embers going so I left it in for about another 15 minutes before bringing it out to let them cool down so this was it I put on some gloves and opened number one this was where the twigs had been and I was, you know, very surprised with the results, happily surprised. It charred very nicely all the way through. Um, yeah, the twigs were brittle, they were black, and they made a nice powder when I crushed them in my hands. So, yeah, from that first experiment with the twigs on the open fire for about an hour, um, very pleased indeed. I was interested to see how the other denser blocks would fare just because it was a different fire, they were harder woods, would they char all the way through? But again, on opening it, I was pleasantly surprised. They charred perfectly, very black colour, very brittle as well, very solid, and indeed black all the way through. So, yeah, it was really, it was really an easy process to do. It took about two hours in total time. Um, and, yeah, either method you want to choose from these two, or if you've got others, let me know, but there's really no excuses. It takes about an hour, an hour for one. Um, limited resources, you just need the metal container, some twigs, organic biomass, and a fireplace, really. Um, 
And yeah, that's the finished product very simple that's going to be crushed up and then dug into the soil and you know as I said it's a mi miracle product this thing this this indigenous wisdom has the potential to really enrich in your soils increase crop produ production and sequester carbon from the atmosphere um, on l a larger scale obviously that doesn't quite work here but anyway thank you for watching I'd love to hear your thoughts methods ideas and how your experiments went um, so stay, stay in touch, keep coming back, and maybe we c I'll be revisiting this concept later on with some more videos. Otherwise, yeah, get biocharring, folks. Maybe little by little we can really create a homegrown biochar revolution. Thanks, take care. Bye for now.